All right, guys. Um, welcome along to my teaching resource um, in the theme of journeys that I've chosen, and I've also chosen to accompany that with the Heart of Darkness text um, that we're going to be looking at throughout this. So let's get straight into it before I make too many mistakes. So obviously, it's been designed as a teaching resource. So the presentation um, is designed for anybody that's looking to teach the theme of journeys. Um, specifically with an English subject, but if you can teach it with another subject, go ahead, use it. Um, and as I said, the resource focuses mainly on Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness as a primary text. Of course, you can apply the principles and things that you're getting out of it quite easily over onto something else, but this is the text that I'm going to be using. Um, I would recommend it for the Year 11 or 12 curriculum. Um, I suppose you could go as young as 9 or 10, um, but the themes are a lot heavier and you're going to get the best out of this particular text anyway um, if you're in the Year 11 or 12 curriculum. Um, and this resource is using the 2007 Penguin Classics edition of the book, um, so just bear that in mind with, with the references. Okay, so journeys. What is a journey? Quite put very, very simply. Uh, a journey can be defined as moving from one place to another, um, but that's very boring. So what are we looking for in stories? We're looking for physical journeys, moving from one place to another, that's travel orientated. But we're also looking at inner journeys, um, the mental and moral journeys that you undertake. We're also looking at journeys of the imagination. What is your imagination doing throughout the story? Uh, what is the character's imagination doing throughout the story? And why do people journey? Um, quite simply, some people journey to discover. They're looking for their identity, trying to discover their identity, or they're looking for adventure, trying to discover some sort of adventure out there. Um, to arrive at a better place than the one that they're at, that's fairly simple or straightforward, but it's worth mentioning. Um, or to escape from something, or to escape to something. So all of these are um, good reasons as to why, why journeys occur, especially in stories. So to give a bit of background for our text, Heart of Darkness, um, it was first published in 1899, so it's right at the turn of the century there, and it's written by a man called Joseph Conrad, who was a sailor in the merchant navy. And that's especially important when we come to our next point, is that it was set in a time of colonialism, and Joseph Conrad would have had a lot of interaction with the colonial, colonialism of the time, and his interaction there was going to come through in, in what he writes in Art of Darkness. It's set in the Congo, Central Africa, so of course that's on the receiving end of colonialism. It's not the instigator. Um, and the story is told from the perspective of the narrator is telling the story as he sits there and listens to Marlowe recount the story. So a bit confusing, but it's a second-hand account of a man recounting his story. Okay, so as I've said, our plot overview for Heart of Darkness starts with the narrator listening to Marlowe, the protagonist, um, talk about his story. So Marlowe joined a trading company as a skipper to uh, obviously drive the boats there, um, and that was partly because of his aunt, allowed him to get into that. Um, he is sent to the Congo to bring back ivory from up the river. They, um, they had a captain that died on them. And so they needed someone to bring the ivory down, which means in doing that, um, Marlowe is sent up the river and he's going to meet the enigmatic Kurtz, which he starts to hear stories about. And as he does travel up the river, as he goes through the different events that he has, um, he gets more and more obsessed by the stories that he hears about Kurtz. Kurtz begins to form in his mind as something a, a lot different um, as he goes along. He finally meets Kurtz. And Kurtz is um, sick, and he dies on the way back from the heart of the Congo jungle. And so Marlowe has actually a part in his final affairs when he returns to Europe. So, journeys in Heart of Darkness. Starting very simply with physical journeys. Marlowe starts his physical journey by leaving Europe, um, and that automatically elevates him above the native African blacks when he arrives there because of the imperialism of the time, because of the colonial setting that this story is in. Um, 
his physical journey also, as he travels up the River Congo, which is mainly what the story is engaged in. Um, and that's both physically endangering and mentally challenging for him. On page 55, there's an example as they come into a skirmish with some of the natives on the bank, and um, that causes Marley to come face to face with death, face to face with violence, um, uh, as he encounters this um, journey up the river. The closer he actually gets to, to Kurtz himself, the more taunted he is by this mental side. Um, so his actual proximity, when he realises that he's getting close to where Kurtz is, is he really starts to play on his mind. He really wants to get there and meet Kurtz. And the closer to the physical heart of the jungle he gets, he ends up being more isolated, he feels. So that centre, that heart of the jungle, um, is really playing with him too on his journey, as he journeys closer. Okay, looking at inner journeys now. So you've got things like Marlowe's inner journey himself is a big one, as he progressively becomes more obsessed with Kirk's, as the stories he hears start to uh, change inside of him, and he, he changes the way that he sees Kurtz. Kurtz is in a journey. Um, he plays a, a, a vital role, obviously, in the story, but the representation we find out later that Marlowe finds of him back in Europe when he talks to, as they call, Kurtz intended, um, we find that his character has seemingly changed or been brought bare out for the person that Marlon meets in the Congo jungle. Um, so that's pretty intense. The nameless character known as the Russian. Now this is also worth noting too. His inner journey seems unchanged from the perspective of the story. When Marlon meets him, he shares his physical journey out of coming out of Europe. But his um, inner journey, who he is when Marlon meets him and who he is when Marlon leaves him, is pretty much the same. So let's look at journeys of imagination now. And probably the biggest one worth mentioning is Marlowe's imagination. And that seems to travel or journey as he considers what Kurtz might be like or in turns um, or turns him into seemingly a voice. And here's a quote from page 59 of the book, uh, which really think I think really embodies what um, Marlowe is doing um, with the stories that he's hearing about Kurtz. And I heard him, him, it, this voice, other voices. All of them were so little more than voices. So that's a quote that really I think embodies just what Marlowe's doing in his head. The stories that he hears and what he does with that as he gets closer on his journey. So the heart of darkness, it's worth mentioning what this is all about. Um, the heart of darkness, how can we identify this in the story? Um, literary criticism tends to place power at the centre. The idea um, that agency is uh, found at the centre and the people on the margins don't have any power. And so that means that when he's looking for the heart of darkness, he's looking for the, the, the power of darkness. And this can be viewed as simply physically the centre of the Congo. Um, as he gets closer to the centre of the Congo, he becomes more and more isolated by it. This could be Kurtz himself. Um, Kurtz's character turns out to be in, in, intensely, um, intensely, almost diabolical, um, and so this uh, is very extreme in, in the way that he's found to be the heart of darkness. He is, as as um, Marlowe journeys up the river, he comes to the centre or the heart where Kurtz is, who happens to be the heart of darkness. And this could be the isolation that I mentioned just before now too. So in a practical classroom example, what are we looking for with kids um, working through this? So perhaps getting the students to pick a character and identify one or more of the journeys um, is an excellent way to start. Um, having them pick one of those journeys, um, physical or inner or uh, imaginative, whatever, and write about the development of that journey. For example, on page 41, um, there's a, a good space where Marlowe rather excited about meeting Kurtz. He's, um, the stories that he's beginning to hear are starting to form in his head, but if you follow his journey through, his inner journey right through to the pa final pages as he talks with Kurtz as intended, his perception is somewhat more bleak because 
he's, he's finally met Kurtz and has experienced what it's like to meet Kurtz. And then when he goes back to Europe, he finds that the perception of that man is very different now. Um, and then you can start to step outside the Heart of Darkness example. Um, perhaps find other colonial stories first, from the West Indies, the Pacific, India, even Australia has really good colonial stories. Um, have them analyse those, but then they can step outside of that colonial boundary as well um, as they start to find more and more uh, journeys to find. Post-colonialism in Heart of Darkness is really important um, because because of colonialism, the way that we view it um, is completely changed and it's imperative that students understand this. So obviously the story occurs during the colonial period, as I've already said many times. Um, the views on racism, fair treatment, sustainability, they are all completely different. And as I said, it's imperative students understand this. Um, so Gurin states um, in this book, uh, the Handbook of Critical Approaches to Literature, page 361, uh, he quotes, I quote, it is impossible to return to a pre-colonial state of mind, unquote. Um, and basically all that means is a culture will forever be affected by its colonisation. Green also mentions, however, on page 362, next one across, that many of today's values are born out of post-colonialism. Um, Labour laws, women's rights, social rights are all so connected um, to post-colonialism and the way that it interacts um, with us today. And then we do, when we start looking back into a colonial state of mind, we find that everything has changed, everything's at odds. So more classroom examples for looking at post-colonialism. Have them analyse the treatment of the natives. Uh, for example, the natives, um, on page 50, uh, they're paid in copper wire, nine inch lengths of copper wire, and that's um, not only useless to them, unless they can catch fish, as Marlow says, uh, as currency, but it's, you know, it's useless to them as, 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 as value. Um, Marlow himself continually refers to them as savages. This kind of treatment would not be accepted in the 21st century. Um, Analysing the treatment of their land, um, as the company and Kurtz himself ravage it for ivory, they're, um, they're there and Kurtz is taking over a whole dynamic of a black tribe in order to get the ivory himself. He even calls it his own. And Ma himself isn't that far removed from that because he is working for the company and his job is to bring the ivory back down the river. is to make money for the company. So now we've looked through Heart of Darkness. Now we've um, identified many things in it um, to do with journeys. And we need to start asking more kind of higher order questions um, that are going to be really practical to the students. So first of all, how do the journeys affect us as we journey with them through the story? So the character is experiencing their own journey as they go through the story, and we experience it almost vicariously with them as we read along. And how, if the character is being affected, are they being affected too as the student? And they need to be able to identify that. Are the experiences in the journeys valuable? So. Marlow um, has this experience of travelling up the river um, on this journey and we're going to go and be in on that journey and get that experience. Um, is it going to be of any value to us? Do the characters find what they're after in their journeys? Marlow is, is seeking, searching, trying to find Kurtz himself and when he finally meets him, we have to ask the question, does he actually really get what he wants, what he's after? Um, he meets Kurtz in a physical sense and he gets to interact with him. But the stories that he's heard about Kurtz and the way that his inner journey, the way that his imagination has involved that, does that match up when he meets Kurtz himself? And the students need to find that as well and start applying it to other aspects, other journeys that they might undertake. And finally, what journeys are you, asking the student, undertaking? What journeys are they undertaking? Are the experiences in them valuable? What effects are those journeys that the student is undertaking having on themselves? If they can start to identify this real high order stuff um, and not just identify a journey within texts themselves, they're going to be uh, set up for a very, very practical, um, uh, useful <laughs> unit. So there you go, guys. That's my research.
uh, sorry, resource <laughs> on um, journeys, uh, looking at the Heart of Darkness text, and I hope hopefully it's useful to some or many.